Thank you for connecting to our broadcast. We pray that it connects, leads, and maybe introduces you to a growing and life-changing relationship with Jesus. Let's go into today's message. I want to talk from the topic uh, for our second week of dealing with yesterday, that he is resolutely the same. Resolutely the same. Um, as we um, are coming into uh, our new year, and we're here um, in the new year, um, and um, second week of the year, um, second week of a new year, still dealing with 10 months, 11 months of last year, but in a new year. And um, we are usually entering the new year with uh, what we call New Year Revo uh, Resolutions. I almost did a Kurt Franklin thing. Are you ready for a revolution? Woo! with new year resolutions and often we enter with goals that we have for the year um, usually we start the year with excitement and vision board parties and anticipation of everything that is to come um, but we've entered this year this new year that we have before us uh, we're not hopeless um, but with a level of um, area of vision planning and pause. We're planning, but we're still pausing uh, as we approach what is before us because um, we're in a sense of um, writing our plans in pencil just in case we need to change it. Uh, we're masked up. Uh, at least you need to be. We're masked up. We are planning. We are working. Many of us are leading. Uh, we're parenting and uh, we're worshiping at home. Um, our vision parties that we would normally be having and where we'd be meeting, many of our vision parties are now via Zoom. Uh, we're sharing our ideas and we're sharing our different plans that we have via Zoom. Um, our resolutions that we would normally have and our goals that we normally have, we're, we're already preparing for adjustments. Some of the different things that we uh, said, I'm going to do this in February and March, we're just like, I might move that to November, I might move that to September, August, because we're just not sure. But in the midst of all of this um, what I would call unsurety um, I feel and sense very strongly as I approach this um, this particular series um, and I like to start the year oftentimes with not that I don't always preach the word but I like to start it oftentimes with a lot more than we normally have because I want you to start off in foundation um, that you have something that you're able to draw back onto. So I really treat this this um, usually the uh, first part of the year um, with a great level of, of consecration and really seeking God on exactly what he would want to say to us as we move forward. And this scripture says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, which means how he was, he is still today and he will be tomorrow. And uh, this was basically a continuation because it was talking about in verse seven about uh, remember your leaders and how God spoke to them and carefully observe how their life went. Um, imitate, it was saying imitate their faith. And then it goes on, Jesus Christ is the same. It was a continuation. It wasn't an interruption. It was a continuation to say, as I moved before in other leaders, as I moved before in other seasons, uh, I will move the same in this season I am still according to Hebrews uh, the 12th chapter and verse 2 I am still the author and I am still the finisher of your faith whatever I start I will complete just someone put in the comment section he will complete what he starts he he never starts anything that he does not complete and in this particular word today I want to uh, teach you more than than preach you but it sometimes creeps up on me and I'm not ever prepared for it but he who was yesterday who suffered um, in times past is now the same God who is now reigning in glory the same God who suffered and came and and robed himself Self in flesh and became the living word has now seated himself at the right hand of God and and we as we approach this uh, resolutely the same as we learn to live through 
and deal with our yesterdays, he still wants us, as we go through this, I want to spell out some things for you, and i got a few points, so I want to go ahead and go through this. He resolutely still wants us, the same way he said before, to listen to his voice. I, I want you to put in the comment section, still listen to his voice. Uh, Hebrews, the first chapter, verse 1 through 4, I'm primarily going to stay in the book of Hebrews for this particular message. Uh, he says, long ago, one, one version says, in sundry times, it says, long ago at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. Uh, but in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things. He, he is the radiance of the glory of God, the exact imprint. What he was saying is he's always speaking as he spoke through prophets before. Now it says he also spoke through his son, which means also he will use anything to speak to you. He uh, basically it talks about don't entertain angels unaware, meaning that you want to make sure that, that you don't overlook how God. God might speak through circumstances. He might speak through people. He might speak through donkeys. He might speak through circumstances and he might speak through pandemics. It is your job and our job to make sure we listen to his voice. It reminds me of a story of a guy who uh, had a particular guy. I think they were in uh, the sawdust uh, min uh, area and I was going to say sawdust ministry, but they went to sawdust uh, area and uh, the guy had lost his uh, clock watch or his, his uh, ticket clock or what you know whatever you call it pocket watch and uh, he couldn't find it and everybody was looking for it and they 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 stopped working just to find the watch they couldn't find it and, and finally they gave up and they said lunch break let's just go the watch is lost in all of this sawdust and it says that one of the guys stayed behind and when the guy stayed behind what he did was he laid on the ground and he put his ear towards the ground and in, when the room was silent, he listened for the ticking of the clock. And when he heard the clock, he listened and he followed the tick until he found it when the room was silent. He had to put his ear to the ground in order to silence himself and remove the noise so that he could hear. And I want to encourage many of you all right now is not that God is not speaking as he has spoken before. But many times you have to silence all the noise. Put in the comment section, silence the noise. You have to listen for his voice. And then it goes on in verse 3. When it talks about how Jesus basically made purification for sins. Then he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. He became a much superior to angels. And because he, he basically did once for all what we couldn't do. And what that means is well, when Jesus made the sacrifice, he sat down at the right hand of God, making intercession for us. Uh, he sat down. He completed the work. Uh, but in the Old Testament, that's not what they were used to. In the Old Testament, the priests would, they would, make, uh, they would make all different types of sacrifices. But the priest of old did not have a chair to sit down they didn't have a chair because it was to remind them that their work was never done that whatever they did they had to go back and do it again but Jesus when he came and became the sacrifice he did it once and for all and did not have to do it again if you don't have anything to praise God for you need to thank God that he doesn't have to do it again he paid for it all in one deposit and he does not have to do it again he wants us to listen to his voice that's the same thing he said in 2020 same thing he said in 1999 same thing he said in 2016 and it's the same thing he's saying in 2021 still listen to my voice the second thing he wants us to do is also make sure that you resolutely still follow his instructions hebrews the fourth chapter and verse 12 says for the word of god is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing uh, the division of the soul and the spirit. What that means is the word has the ability to find you where you are. Wherever you are, the word can find you. I want you to put in the comment section, I got a word for it. That means that no matter what season you're in, even in this new year, even if we're still dealing with the yesterday and still dealing with what we came in this year with, there is still a word for this season. The word will find you you just got to be able to follow the instruction he says the word of God is living the words not dead it's living it's still potent for your situation and it's sharper than any two-edged sword meaning not only will it cut what uh, cut what needs to be cut out of you but it will also heal you and it will mend you someone say I got a word for it 
Uh, he says, I want you to follow my instructions. I will make sure you have exactly what you need. It reminds me of when I, a few years ago, I was at a wedding uh, in Chicago. And uh, I remember that while I was driving to the wedding uh, down to, I don't remember what part of Chicago I was in, but I was in uh, the not so developed part. Uh, for those of you who know what that is, I was not in the so pristine downtown area. I was in another part that you don't necessarily want to be in after dark, not lost. And I was driving and while I was there, uh, uh, the GPS could not locate where I was. Um, that was a few years ago. Um, uh, maybe it was because I didn't have an iPhone at that time. No shot to anybody else. But it could not uh, could not pick up my location. It could not find where I was. And I was frustrated. And I just kept driving around forever. And I was just driving. And I was lost. And, and there's nothing like driving and lost and having a passenger. Because my wife was telling me, you, you need to call somebody. And most men don't want to call and ask for instructions. That's just me maybe not you and I didn't want to say anything so I kept driving around lost but what happened was I eventually turned off my phone and reset it uh, when I turned the phone back on and when I reset the phone uh, the satellite connected to my phone and it showed me that I was closer to the location than I thought uh, but I just needed to reset my phone and when I reset it it picked up exactly where I was when I was just right around the corner and for those of you who are starting this year and you feel like you're just going around in circles and you don't know where you are sometimes you have to reset yourself and you have to reset and turn off some things that's why we're in a season of prayer and fasting you have to turn off some things so that you can reset because the word knows exactly where you are and I was right around the corner and I want to tell you right now that some of you are closer than you think put in the comment section I am closer than I think so you want to make sure that as we come into this year and as we come into this he wants to remind us one to make sure you still listen to his voice don't stop listening to him secondly don't stop following his instruction and thirdly don't stop being concerned about people I know that many of you are saying, I, I'm in a pandemic, I'm going through, I'm isolated, I don't see anybody. But Hebrews 13 chapter verse 1 says, let brotherly love continue. Uh, the same love that you had, uh, same love you needed, give that same love. I, I know you don't have to see anybody to do it, but still be concerned about other people. Uh, yes, you might not be in the tragic situations that other people are, but still pray for people and still cover people and still intercede for people. There's nothing wrong with still treating people with kindness. You can be in a mean situation, but you don't have to be mean to people outside of your situation. Just because you're going through things doesn't mean you have to inflict what you're going through on other people who are trying to help you. I know there's a word for somebody just because you're going through doesn't mean you have to make other people suffer for what it is you're going through. He says, let brotherly love continue. Still love people, still be concerned about people, still be caring for people. So we want to make sure that as we go through this, he's resolutely the same. I, I know I hope this is helping you. That he's resolutely the same. He hasn't changed certain things. And I just want to teach you that he hasn't changed uh, what he said. He hasn't changed his voice. Uh, he hasn't changed his instruction. He hasn't, uh, he hasn't exchanged. He hasn't changed what he wants us to do to be concerned about people. And fourthly, he wants to make sure that he's still the same God who speaks truth. Uh, resolutely the same truth the truth hasn't changed the truth doesn't change at all John the 8th chapter verse 31 through 32 I'm coming out of Hebrews and I'm gonna come back John 8 31 32 says so Jesus said to the Jews uh, who had believed him if you abide in my word you are truly my disciples. Abide means dwell in. Uh, dwell in means live in. Uh, live in means to allow it to stay there. Uh, you don't just visit the word. Let the word live in you. Like don't move from it. Just stay with it. He said if you allow the word to stay in you. He says then you will know the truth. Uh, know meaning you will have a relationship with the truth. Now have a relationship with the truth doesn't mean you'll hear about it. It means you'll have a personal encounter with it. Uh, you will know the truth and what you know will set you free. Uh, freedom comes from what you know. Uh, there are many of us who are free, uh, but we don't know it. <laughs> but this scripture says when you know the truth, uh, you'll never be bound again. Uh, when you know the truth, you'll never be entangled in that again. When, when you know the truth, not just about the word, but when you know the truth about who you are, you'll never believe a lie that anybody says about you. And that's why I want to encourage you. When you know, spend time in the truth, uh, spend time knowing who you are. 
Spend time finding out what God says about you. Spend time finding out what it is that he speaks on your life and what he said about your life. And when you know that, you won't believe everything that anybody says about you. Even though somebody says your hair is pretty, you've already told yourself that. And when you know that your outfit looks nice, I've already told myself that. When you go somewhere and someone says, I like your mask, I know I designed it. When you know the truth about it, you don't have to, you don't fall for everything. You have to speak the truth. Surround yourself with the truth. Uh, build yourself in the truth. Speak the truth to your family speak the truth to your children truth is not based on feelings truth is not based on relativity as, as truth is a standard it is God's viewpoint and I know we live in a time where everybody is watching every different type of wind of doctrine and everybody's following this person and following this thing and looking at this thing and you listen to this podcast and listen to this different thing and we're listening to all these different things because we're in search for something but his truth has not changed his truth is still marching on someone put in the comment section his truth has not changed his viewpoint has not changed I know it, it, it might not be exciting and I know it sounds like old school preaching but it's truth is still truth if we were in the holiness church we would say holiness is still right it has not changed just because we are in changing times the word has not changed his truth I need to tell you that his truth is still the same everything God says about you has not changed every word he spoke has not changed what God said he will not take back before he takes it back he'll add more to it the grass may wither and the flowers may fade but his word will not pass away someone put in the comment section his word is true it will not change the same truth that I accepted when I was nine years old and gave my heart to Jesus it's the same truth that I'm preaching about in 2021 and almost 41 that truth has not changed I've seen people walk away from it but I'm still in it I've seen people preach what is trending but I'm still preaching truth and what I'm telling you is when you preach truth truth will make you happy all by itself some people want gravy sermons and some people want tickling ears but what I want is the truth because when I'm in a fight I need something to stand on when I'm going through dark seasons I need something to stand on and I need to make sure his truth my eyes have seen the glory and the coming of the Lord someone put in the comment section say his truth is still standing his truth can knock down I'm telling you when you're going through seasons when you feel knocked down and almost out of breath you need to look at that devil and say I got truth for my season I got a word for this thing what you try to do is knock me out but I still got the truth of God uh, if I were a flight attendant, I would tell you many times when we're in a, a passenger seat, we don't see where we're going. Uh, when we're sitting in the passenger seat, we see where we've been. Uh, because when you're looking through the mirror, uh, looking through the window, excuse me, all you see is what you passed. Uh, but the flight attendant or, or the pilot of the flight, excuse me, uh, sees where we're going and sees the storm and was able to, to listen to different things and devices and has an earpiece. So he's listening and following instructions because the tower oftentimes is directing it. And I know you see yourself circling uh, the pattern and you want to land because you got somewhere to go. But, but the pilot has to listen and know when it's time to clear. He cannot land until it's time to clear. And many of you are, are backseat drivers and passengers and you're trying to tell the pilot where to go but you have a disadvantage point because you don't have the viewpoint of the passenger you don't have the viewpoint of the pilot and that's what God is trying to speak to you I know you're trying to put a period where God is just trying to put a comma because he sees what you don't see and I want you to trust the pilot I want you to stay in your seat I want you to put your mask on first make sure that you do what you gotta do but in order for you to land safely trust the pilot put in the comment section trust the pilot who is the pilot he is the author and finisher of my faith he is the captor he is the bishop of my soul his truth still stands uh, he wants to make sure that as we move through this thing that we listen to his voice that we listen to his instruction we we can still stay concerned about people and we still listen and believe in truth and then this one point I don't want I got three more points and I'm through I'm trying to spell something out for you and continue because he's resolutely the same he hasn't changed uh, he wants you to still make sure don't, don't look don't log off please don't log off he wants to make sure you still operate in obedience 
It's a word we don't talk about a lot of times in the church about obedience and uh, like what you're trying to say. And especially when you're doing premarital counseling, you talk about submission and all that. Who, who's submitting to who? who? And we we'd want to do all these different things. Talk about well, who's obeying who? I ain't obeying nobody. I got my own house and all this stuff. But obedience is, is, is what that means is Hebrews, the 13th chapter. I'm back in Hebrews. Don't log up. 13 and verse 17 says, obey your leaders. And submit to them for they are keeping watch over your souls for they who will have to give an account. Let them do this with joy and not groaning. What that means is uh, uh, you want to make sure that 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 your teacher does not groan to see you. Uh, make it easy for the teacher because oftentimes as a student I don't always know what the teacher knows uh, that's why we're students and that's why we go to class and that's why we get degrees and, and that's what because we don't know and, and, it, and it's difficult for us when we turn in a paper that we think is an A and, and the teacher turns it back and marks it all up and we got to turn it back in and they say no it needs to be in APA style or all these different things when I, I don't want to do it like that and I want to do it the way I want to do it and that's how we try to teach and that's how we try Try to treat things or people that God has placed over us that is trying to say there is a way that seems right to a man in his own eyes but in your own eyes it will lead to destruction so to be able to make sure that you still obey and still have a submissiveness to be able to say I'm not submitting to a person uh, I'm submitting to God's order and his design because he knows what's best for me and he will put who I need over me to watch over my soul and to cover me and to pray for me when I can't cover myself if you have a good leader or a good mentor in your life just go ahead and put all in the in the comment section right now thank God that God will give you what you need he'll give you a mentor give you a leader whatever it is that you need when you need it and the next thing is he wants to make sure that you still obey and then that you also uh, as we can he's resolutely the same he hasn't changed he hasn't changed in making sure that you still develop your relationship with him that you still keep a relationship Hebrews 13 chapter and verse 5 says uh, keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have for he has said I will never leave you nor forsake you what that means is I don't want you to be consumed about things don't be worried about things that, that you will lose and things that, that can, cannot stay. I mean, I know we're, we're concerned and we're like, well, I'm not sure about this and I, I'm not sure about that and I, I need this and I need that. He says, I'll never leave you. Uh, things will leave and, 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 and they'll cut your pay and, and you'll get slips and, and they'll downsize different things. But, but I will never leave you. Someone put in the comment section and say, he'll never leave me. He says, I will never leave you. He says, I, he says, I want you to make sure your relationship with me is intact. Don't trust the government. Uh, don't trust institutions don't trust people for your resources I will give you what you need that's why the psalmist says I did look to the hills but my help didn't come from the hills my help came from who the Lord the maker of heaven and earth so to make sure that no matter where you are in your life that your help does not come from what you see your help is in what you don't see to be able to say my relationship is intact that's why I haven't gone crazy that's why I haven't given up that's why I haven't thrown in the towel because my help is secure in him uh, he hasn't changed his nature hasn't changed he's still providing he's still making ways he's still opening doors he's still doing things that I didn't think he could do he's still he's still uh, opening doors that other people said was closed he, he's still doing it so I want you to put in the comment section that he's still doing it I'm through here now that I'm still doing it that's why I said keep your life free from worry uh, keep your life free from pain keep your keep your life free from all that type of stuff and uh, I think it's in Matthew uh, 6 he says uh, what of you can add anything to your life by worrying about this stuff worrying about all these different things he said but what I want you to do is seek first his kingdom seek first his order and his righteousness and everything you need will be provided for you now lastly I want to go back through this as I say he's resolutely the same and I hope this has helped you I wasn't trying to hype you I want to help you he says one I want to make sure that you still listen to my voice this is God encouraging us to still listen to my voice I know you're still dealing with yesterday still dealing with things of the past still listen to my voice 
Still listen to my instruction. Still listen to my concern. Still be concerned about other people. Still lean into truth. Don't, don't, don't leave truth. This is not the time, if Marvin Sapp were here, this is not the time or the place to give up. This is not the time to throw in. Don't, don't give up truth yet. Still hold on to truth. Still work on your obedience and to the areas that, that God would have for us to obey and be obedient. And still develop your relationship. And lastly, he wants us to make sure that we still keep a yielded life. Uh, a yielded life means to keep a surrender in you. Um, if, if, I, if I had my, uh, my Kojic pastors and Kojic uh, uh, family here, they would say, keep a yes, Lord. Uh, don't, don't leave your yes. Keep, keep a fresh one. Uh, every single day I'm learning how to say yes more. Every day I'm learning how to surrender my will to his will. Uh, Romans says, uh, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Uh, we used to sing the song, I, I got another yes, Lord, in my soul. But to be able to keep a yes, someone put in the comment section, to keep a yes, keep, keep a yielded life. If you want transition and if you want things in your life, you got to keep a yes not not a half-hearted yes but but keep a yes I, I remember and I know we can't do this right now but but if we were to do uh, uh, we would do to uh, what if we were to do an altar call right now just imagine us doing a virtual right now what we would do is we would have you come up to the altar and as you came up to the altar we would tell you to put a yes in your heart put a yes Lord in your soul put a yes in your mouth it wasn't just something you said but it was yielded to say I'm yielded I'm, I'm open to whatever it is that God wants to do in my life and in order for you to experience this you gotta have a yes Lord you gotta have that passion and have that desperation in your heart that's why Hebrews the third chapter verse 20 I'm through here the Hebrews 13 20 and 21 says now may the grace or uh, may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus the great shepherd of the sheep by the blood of the eternal covenant may he equip you with every good thing that you may do his will why is he equipping me because he wants me to do his will he doesn't want me to waste another year he doesn't want me to wait till the pandemic is over to figure out what his will is. That's why we're seeking him this year. That's why we're going, we're going through this time of prayer and consecration because he wants to make sure that as you approach this year that you're saying, yes, Lord, show me your will. What is it that you want me to do? How is it that you want me to go? I'll say, yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say, yes, Lord, yes, uh, to you. Uh, I will trust you and I will obey. I'll say, yes, Lord. I'll say, yes, so put in the comment section I'll say yes Lord and maybe that's what's been going on with many of us is that we have not said yes we have not gotten to the point that we have gone to the season where we have listened to his voice but that's what God wants to remind us to make sure that you still lean into his voice that you still listen to him what is he saying I, I would I, I would use for I want to use this loosely that you still have the ear hustle to heaven let's still listen what is it that he's saying I remember as a child uh, many times I, I had my room in Greenville, Kentucky. I know you don't know where Greenville is, but Greenville, Kentucky, my room was, was positioned to the living room. And many times when my parents were in the other room, uh, when they were in the living room watching certain things, they would send me to bed. But I would put my ear towards the wall so that I can listen to hear what was going on in the other room and a lot of times my parents would figure out what I was doing and they would say boy go to sleep but what I'm saying is when you need to know what you need to know sometimes you got to ear hustle towards heaven and say I need to hear exactly what you want to say I don't want to miss anything that you have for me I don't want to miss what it is I don't want to miss my season I don't want to miss my moment I don't want to miss my turn I don't want to miss anything that God has for me and secondly you want to make sure that you follow his instructions because because once I hear him, he'll tell me what I need to know. When you tune your ears towards him, he'll tell you what you need to know. And as I need to know what I need to know, he'll make sure that I have a concern and a passion and a heart for other people. And as I get a heart and a passion for other people, he will lead me in truth. He will lead me in holiness. He will lead me in righteousness. Someone put in the comment section, he'll lead me where I need to go. Wherever you need to go, he'll lead you. Whatever you need to know, he'll teach you. Wherever you need to know, he'll lead you. Wherever you need to go, he'll show you. Put it in the comment section. He'll show me what I need to know. And then matter of fact, after that, after I learn his truth, he'll teach me how to obey. He'll teach me how to obey. I know we don't shout about obedience. We don't shout about, we don't shout about submission. 
That's not a word that brings a shout. That's not a word that brings celebration. But to be able to trust him. Trust and never doubt. That's why Proverbs says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. If you need your path directed, you got to be able to trust him and be obedient to his word. And as I learn the truth and as I learn to obey, he'll give me the right relationship that I need with him. Because I need a closer word relation with him. Uh, my granddaddy used to sing the song uh, a long time ago. Uh, granddaddy Harry Ed, uh, he would sing the song. He said he wanted his son at his funeral. He died many years ago, but the song that he said, just a closer walk with thee, granted Jesus is my plea, daily walking close with thee, let it be, let it be, let it be, we don't sing songs like that anymore, now we sing just want to praise you, but my granddaddy sang songs where he would say, I just want a closer walk with you, we used to sing songs like I'm trying not to age myself, but I feel like this because I'm coming to an end. We wish to sing, I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to hold my hand. And we would say, while I'm on this teacher's journey, I want Jesus to walk with me. I want somebody to put in the comment section, I want him to walk with me. If Kanye West was here, y'all don't mind me using him. He would say, Jesus walks. Put in the comment section, Jesus walks with me. Another songwriter said, and he walks with me. And he talks with me And he tells me that I am his own And the joy we share As we tarry there None other has ever known I feel Jesus and I'm going to end this day I want you to put in the comment section I want a closer relationship with Jesus I want a closer relationship with him This pandemic almost made me lose my mind Almost made me go insane I'm tired of masks I'm tired of Zoom I'm tired of being in the house I'm tired of all this foolishness I'm tired of being scared to touch somebody Tired of being scared to hug somebody Tired of doing Chinese bows I want normalcy But let me tell you If the storm keeps on raging In your life If the wind doesn't stop blowing Make sure your soul Make sure your soul is anchored Make sure your soul is anchored Put in the comment section My soul's gotta be anchored I still gotta stay with Jesus we don't preach messages about Jesus no more We preach messages about how he died on Friday And how he got up on Sunday And that's where we end But I don't just need the Jesus of Calvary I need Jesus on Sunday I need Jesus on Monday I need Jesus on Tuesday I need Jesus on Wednesday Jesus on Thursday Jesus on Friday Matter of fact, I need Jesus on the T days of the week Today tomorrow Tuesday and Thursday put in the comment section I need the same Jesus every time I need him before I clock I need Jesus before I go off I need Jesus before I go insane I need Jesus these walls are closing in on me so I need Jesus if Erica Campbell were here she would say I need a little more Jesus put in the comment section I need Jesus and the only way when I get Jesus He'll teach me how to say yes I can have a yielded life I can lift my hands And say your will Not my will Your will Not my will I think I know what's best But I don't know what's best I think I know the decisions But I don't know the decisions I need you I need Jesus Somebody put in the comment section I gotta keep a yes I gotta keep a yes I know you thought I was just making up words but I wasn't just making up words when he said that this title is resolutely the same what that means is every word I just told you if you take the first letter of every word that I said it spells out victory and if I'm going to have victory this year I'm going to have to listen to his voice if I'm going to have victory this year I'm going to have to make sure that I follow his instruction if I'm going to have victory this year I can't have victory without being concerned if I want to have victory I can't have victory without truth if I want to have victory I can't have victory without obedience and if I'm going to have victory I can't have victory without relationship with Jesus and finally I can't have victory without a yielded life that means if you
you're going to have victory. You got to follow what Jesus said. That's why he said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That means I haven't changed. My principles haven't changed. My promises haven't changed. My requirements haven't changed. And victory hasn't changed. Death is swallowed up. Oh, grave, where is your victory? Where is your sting? He said, I got the victory you need in order for you to have victory. It's in me. It's in Jesus. Somebody put in the comment section, I got victory, but it's only in Jesus. I got victory, but it's only in Jesus. I can't have victory without Jesus. I can't have a victorious life without Jesus. Put in the comment section, it's still Jesus. 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 Put in the comment section, it's still Jesus. It's still Jesus. To be able to know that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He says, I want you to have a victorious life, but we won't, we won't, um, I want victory, but I only want victory um, my way. I want victory if I follow this or I do this or if I get a part of this group. Jesus said, no, if you want victory, I haven't changed my standards. They're still the same. Pandemics don't produce victory, but promises do. Huh? If you're waiting for a pandemic to give you a way out, you'll miss it. But if you trust the promises of God, the promises of God are in him. Yes and amen. I want to encourage you all. I know that that didn't make sense in some ways to say he's resolutely the same. To say that even if your resolutions fail, he won't. If your plans are skewed and changed and out of alignment, he's not. He hasn't changed. He's still the same. Same God. Same God. If he did it back then, he'll do it before. Same God back then. Same God right now. Same God. Don't change. Don't change. Don't change your position because of a pandemic. Don't don't change your position because he hasn't changed his. Stay still. We sing a song that said, after you've done all you can, stand. Stand on the promises. Stand on the promises. Stand, stand on the promises. Victory. Victory is in Christ. I want to pray for you, everybody who's streaming in right now. I want to I want to lift you up in prayer that you have a life of victory resolutely the same victory in Jesus everybody I pray Lord in the name of Jesus for every person who's streaming every person who has um, been in the pot or a spot where like I, I don't know if victory is for me you haven't changed you haven't changed your standard your truth is still the same and I pray Lord that we would rest in your truth we'll rest Rest in your truth. Rest in what it is that you say. Rest in it is what you promised us. That we would trust that you never change. Your standards never change. Your love never change. Your promises never change. And if you never change, we will trust the unchanging nature of our God. Scripture says, some trust in horses and some trust in chariots. But we will trust in the name of the Lord. Thank you for giving us something that's resolute. That you've never changed. And we honor you and we glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Those of you who you streamed in today and you said, hey. I want to be a part of this family. This is this is a this is my this is my family. I, I feel like I want to be a part of this church. I want to be a part of this family. I want you to go ahead and, and the information is on the screen. How you can be a part of our family. Uh, for those of you who say I want to give my life to Jesus, um, I'm gonna in a few moments and I, uh, before you log off today, I'm gonna lead you in a prayer of salvation. For those of you who say, Hey, I would love to give to this church. I want to give to this ministry. I want to. I believe in this particular ministry. I want to make sure that the, that you give and you sold today based on the word say you know what I'm sowing into this word today because I need it in the midst of inconsistency I needed a consistent God <laughs> oh.
Come on, somebody put in the comment section that he's consistent. After you're done, all you can. <laughs> Come on, everybody put in the comment section say he's consistent. After you've done all you can. Come on, say it. Come on, come on, everybody. After you've done. Oh, after you've done all you can. Come on, everybody. In the seat. Say, after you've done all you can. After you've done all you can. I want you to have victory. I want you to have victory. After you've done all you can. Oh, after you've done all you can. Hold yourself. After you've done all you can. It's been difficult, but his, his promises are the same. He hasn't changed. After you've done everything, stand. Stay there. Stand resolute in the promises of God. Thank you for tuning in today. Share this with everybody you can. Share with everybody you can. We're going to go out of here still singing the same song. Uh, still singing, still praising and believing God. And we'll see you same time next week. Come on, everybody. Lift your hands. Say, after you've done, after you've done all you can. support and generous giving that makes this ministry possible for more ways to connect visit online at growthpointchurch.org 
If you enjoyed today's message, like our page, share the message with your friends, or take a screenshot and share on your social stories and tag us at My Growth Point. Until next time, keep growing.